Welcome to lecture 15, if statements. If statements are the first method that we can use to make our programs think on their own. If statements are extremely simple. Basically, they take in some kind of Boolean expression or something that evaluates to some Boolean value or bool. And that a bool, if you remember, is something that evaluates to either true or false. So an if statement takes in anything that can evaluate to a true or false. So that's a bool, anything with, that uses comparison operators like greater than, less than, is equal to, is not equal to, all those things return either a true or false, and an if statement can use those. So the syntax of creating one is simply the if keyword, so I type in if, then I create my parentheses. Now, the boolean value goes inside of these, so anything that evaluates to a bool value. So We'll start off by using um, a less than sign. So let's start off by creating just a temp variable. We'll say int age equals 5. So we just create a variable called age, and we set it equal to the value of 5. So I'm just going to do it in a simple if statement saying if age is less than 10. See, less than returns a true or false. So basically, anything inside of the if statement's parentheses must evaluate to a true or false value, which it does in this case, because age less than 10 can either be true or it could be false. It can only be one or the other. So I'm saying if age is less than 10, then I want to display a message saying age is less than 10. This is very simple, our first uh, example of it. So I hit enter, and under the if statement, I'm going to type in console.write line age is less than 10. So if I go ahead and run this program, you'll see that it says age is less than 10. So because the age is less than 10, it runs the code. Now to prove to you that it, that's not um, always going to run age less than 10, I'm going to change this to age is 15. So now age is 15, the if statement is now not true anymore. This is, does not return a true value because the if statement first part, the first section of the if statement only runs if the, the expression inside of the if statement returns true. So if this is true, then it will run this. Because this is false now, it shouldn't run it anymore. So if I run the program, you can see it does not say anything now. All right, let's go ahead and change it back to 5. So let's run it again just to check. And there you go, now it's saying it again. But now I want to bring up another issue. What if I wanted to do multiple lines of code for my if statement? So I'm going to go ahead and add another line of code. I'm going to say, if the person's age is less than 10, I want to say age is less than 10. And I also want to say something else. I want to say, wow, you are young. So I just want to add this another if statement. And I'm going to leave it like that. When I run this, it's going to run both lines, and everything seems okay. It says, age less than 10, wow, you are young. However, let's go ahead and make age 15 again. So now, age is 15, the if statement is not true anymore. It's false, so it shouldn't not run these lines of code anymore. However, when I run it, as you can see, it still says, wow, you are young. And basically what's going on here is that the problem is, while you are wrong, uh, young is not a part of the if statement. By default, only the first statement that follows the if statement is included in the if statement. So because this is false, it's not running this line because that is a part of the if statement. However, while you are young is not part of it. It's just out in the open and it's going to run every single time. So no matter what the if statement returns, either true or false, it always runs runs while you are young. So how do we make it that um, the if statement uses multiple statements or can execute multiple statements? Basically, we introduce this, this new concept of blocks. I talked about it a little bit. Basically, the blocks are curly braces. So if I add a curly brace there and then below all my statements and I surround my two statements in these curly braces, now it creates this block, and now they're all a part of the if statement. So because I put this and this around my two if statements, now they're both part of this one if statement. 
So if your if statement is followed by a block, whatever is inside of that block is now part of the if statement. It's the same thing with the class, the namespace, and the static main. They all are the same. Everything that's inside of the block is a part of the whatever it is. Um, so now these are a part of it. So now when I run this program, you can see it does not say anything anymore. Now, it's generally a good programming practice to always put in your braces or, or in to make that block. Even if you're only going to have one line of code execute for your if statement, it's still a good practice to put it in because most of the time you'll end up going back and adding more code to your if statement and it just saves you the hassle of adding it then. You could just have it and you just hit enter and then you can start typing again. It also makes it sort of easy to read so you know exactly what is a part of the if statement. For me personally, I always, for my if statement, always add in my blocks. Even if it's going to be only one line of code, I always add it in. So I, I mentioned before that anything inside the if statement's parameters or the, in between the parentheses, um, anything that, I, that evaluates to a Boolean expression or I mean a Boolean value, so anything that's true or false can be put there. So I just want to prove that to you. So I just want to create a bool. Maybe bool my bool equals true. So this a bool can hold a true or false value, and because this returns true or false, I can literally just say if my bool and pass in my bool like that. Because anything that returns true or false can go inside of an if statement. Now this may be a little confusing, because you may be expecting me to say if my bool equals true. Now that also returns true or false because the comparison equal returns true or false. However, by default, because my bool is a true or false, this is saying if my bool equals true. So I can just say if my bool, and that means if my bool is true, run this code. So if I go ahead and run that, it, it runs the code. Now if I make it false, you'll see that now it does not say anything. So by passing in a bool itself, that can work that can work. Anything that evaluates to a bool, anything that could be literally a bool itself or less than, greater than, equal to, not equal to, these all return a true or false that can be put inside of an if statement. So before we move on to the last part of this uh, lecture, let's talk about, or no, let's do an example of making that age validator program that I was talking about in the first lecture. We basically did it already, but I, I want to actually ask the user to type in their age and make it a little bit more practical. So let's start off by saying console.writeline, enter your age. Once they enter their age, I'm going to read it in and store it into an integer. So that's int age equals console.readline. So that's going to read it in. However, readline gets read in as a string. Remember this from the first section. There's a little review. So I need to convert it into an integer. So I'm going to say int.parse, and that converts a string into an integer. So now I have my integer age, and now I can make my program think on its own. And I can do an if statement. So I'm going to say if age is greater than, or I'll say greater than or equal to 18, then I'm going to write, I'm just going to write, you're good to go, whatever. However, if I run this program, it's only going to say something if they are greater than or equal to 18. So for example, I'm gonna first type in 15, hit enter, nothing happens because I don't have any code that says if that is false, do something else. We're, we're actually gonna take a look at that in the next uh, lecture. However, let's try this running this again. And now this time, let's type in 18, and it says you're good to go. So as you can see, my program can think on its own already. Even though it's really basic right now, I can say if they're 18, do this set of code. Otherwise, do something else, which we'll see in the next lecture. The last thing I want to talk about in this lecture is the concept of nested if statements. Now this concept in itself could be confusing. However, if you really think about it, it's not confusing. Basically, nested if statement is just an if statement inside of another if statement. Now recall, when this is true, it runs whatever code is inside of its block for the if statement. 
Now a nest if statement is saying, okay, if that's true, the code that to run for if it is true will contain another if statement, for example. So I'm going to add another if statement here and say, if your age is greater than 18, I then want to check to make sure that you're also that you're less than 55, for example. So we can add another if statement inside of the if statement. So I can say if age is less than or equal to 55, then do something else. So I'm going to say console.write line, um, good to go. So in this case, if your age is greater than 18, it's going to run whatever code is inside of its block. It just so happens to be that there's another if statement. So we just treat it as another if statement and we execute the if statement as normal. So I'll just say, okay, if age is less than 55, then do this code. Otherwise, do nothing because I didn't tell it to do anything. Most people get confused with this because they're a little intimidated by having lots of if statements. But if you just stop and think about it, it makes sense. You can put any type of code you want inside of the block for an if statement. So I'm just so happy to put another if statement and it just read the if, that if statement as is. So don't get confused by that. So let's go ahead and run this. So once again, if I type in, let's say 30, I'm good. Good to go because I'm greater than 18 and I'm still less than 55. However, if I type in 60, now it's not going to say anything anymore. So even though 60 is greater than 18, it didn't write good to go because 60 is not less than 55. I added another check by using nested if statements. Now, as you can see, nested if statements allow us to make our program think a little bit more. However, there's, in later uh, lectures, we'll look at another way that we can actually do this that makes it a little bit easier to read and to understand. So that's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to be looking at if-else statements. Basically, if-else statements are just the other side of the if statement. As you can see in, in this example, it only right now does the if statement if it is true. However, with if-else statements, we can say if it is false, then do something else. So we can say if the age is less than 18, do something else. We, we don't have to only check for if it's true. We can also check for the false side. And that's what the, the next lecture is all about.